magnetic field intensity of <coughs> transverse electromagnetic wave in lossy dielectric medium. We consider the phasor value of the electric field intensity in uh, a lossy medium. The phasor value of the electric field intensity in the lossy medium is given by equation number 21 where it is equal to E naught into E raised to power minus gamma k z a x. You see this uh, unit vector shows that <coughs> <clears throat> this vector quantity has got only one component that is the x component there is no component of the electric field intensity along y axis no component of the electric field intensity along z axis and gamma k is uh, a complex quantity and this complex quantity has got two components the real component is alpha which is known as the attenuation constant and the imaginary component is beta which is the phase constant. Sometimes we represent this beta by k. Anyhow, we want to find out the magnetic field intensity of the transverse electromagnetic wave in uh, a lossy dielectric medium. So we consider this equation of Maxwell. According to this equation of Maxwell, the curl of the magnetic field intensity is equal to minus j omega mu h. And we can find out the magnetic field intensity from uh, this uh, equation number 22. The magnetic field intensity will be equal to 1 over minus j omega mu into the curl of the electric field intensity. So the quantity in the bracket is known as the curl of the electric field intensity and we calculate the curl of the electric field intensity with the help of this uh, determinant. So the magnetic field intensity will be equal to 1 over minus j omega mu. In the first row of this determinant, we have the unit vector Ax, the unit vector Ay, and the unit vector Az. In the second row of uh, this determinant, we have curly by curly x, curly by curly y, and curly by curly z. In the third row of this determinant, we have the x component of the electric field intensity, the y component of the electric field intensity, and the z component of the electric field intensity. So we know that the electric field intensity has got only one component which is the x component. The y component is 0 and the z component is 0 as well. So let us put the value of the electric field intensity in uh, the given de determinant. So the magnetic field intensity will be equal to 1 over minus j omega mu and then we have the unit vector Ax, the unit vector Ay, the unit vector Az in the first uh, row of this determinant. We have curly by curly x, curly by curly y, curly by curly z in the second row of this determinant. Here is uh, the x component of the electric field intensity which is E naught into E raised to power minus gamma cape z. The y component is 0 and the z component is 0 as well. We expand this determinant. The expansion of this determinant results in this particular equation. So the magnetic field intensity 
will be equal to minus gamma cape by minus j omega mu e naught into e raised to power minus gamma cape z a y you see the electric field intensity was along x axis and the magnetic field intensity is along y axis it means that in case of transverse electromagnetic wave these two fields are normal to each other we put the value of gamma cape in this particular equation we know that gamma cape is basically equal to minus j omega under root mu epsilon cape so we put the value of the gamma cape in this particular equation and we obtain this particular uh, equation the magnetic field intensity is equal to minus j omega under root mu epsilon cape by minus j omega mu e naught into e raised to power minus gamma cape z a y we simplify this equation and uh, the simplification of this particular equation gives you equation number uh, 24 we simplify this equation and the simplification of this equation gives you equation number 24 so we obtain equation number 24 where the phasor value of the magnetic field intensity is equal to 1 over under root mu by epsilon cape e naught e raised to power minus gamma cape z a y and we replace the quantity in the, in the denominator of the previous equation by eta cape so eta cape is uh, equal to under root mu by epsilon cape and uh, this is a complex quantity here are a number of ways to represent this complex quantity so we represent this complex quantity in exponential form so this complex quantity is equal to eta into e raised to power j theta so we put the value of eta and gamma cape in uh, the previous equation so the magnetic field intensity is equal to 1 over eta into e raised to power j theta and then we have e naught e raised to power minus alpha z minus j beta z a y so this is the value of gamma cape we know that gamma cape is equal to alpha plus j beta well the same equation can be written as the magnetic field intensity will be equal to 1 over eta e naught e raised to power minus alpha z minus j beta z minus j theta a y this is the phasor value of the magnetic field intensity in uh, the transverse electromagnetic wave so equation number 26 which gives you the phasor value of the magnetic field intensity of the transverse electromagnetic wave in a lossy dielectric medium uh, can be uh, written as this is uh, the instantaneous value of the magnetic field intensity the instantaneous value of the magnetic field intensity will be equal to uh, e naught by eta into e raised to power minus alpha z sine of omega t minus beta z minus theta into a y so this equation is in instantaneous form if you guys if you guys want to calculate the average power density of the wave uh, which is the power per unit area so you guys can uh, calculate the average power density 
of the transverse ele electromagnetic wave with the help of this particular equation. We have 1 over 2 and then we have the real component of the electric field intensity cross the conjugate of the magnetic field intensity. So this is how we calculate the average power density of the transverse electromagnetic wave in a lossy dielectric medium. The magnetic field intensity of the transverse electromagnetic wave in lossless dielectric medium. We consider the phasor value of the electric field intensity in a lossless dielectric medium where it is equal to E naught into E raised to power minus J beta Z AX. You see sometime we represent this beta by K it makes no difference. You guys can represent uh, uh, this uh, phase constant either with the help of beta or with the help of k. So this is uh, the phasor value of the electric field intensity in a lossless dielectric medium. We want to find out the magnetic field intensity of the transverse electromagnetic wave in a lossless dielectric medium and in order to find out the magnetic field intensity of the transverse electromagnetic wave in a lossless dielectric medium, we consider this equation of Maxwell. So we consider this equation of Maxwell. This equation of Maxwell is uh, given in equation number 45, which says that the curl of the electric field intensity is equal to minus j omega mu h. And uh, we can find out the magnetic field intensity with the help of this particular equation. The magnetic field intensity will be equal to 1 over minus j omega mu and then we have the curl of the electric field intensity. And you know that the curl of the electric field intensity is calculated with the help of this uh, determinant. So the magnetic field intensity will be equal to 1 over minus j omega mu and we calculate the curl of the electric field intensity with the help of this determinant. Uh, in the first row of this determinant we have the unit vector Ax, the unit vector Ay, the unit vector Az. In the second row of this determinant we have curly by curly x, curly by curly y and curly by curly z and then we have the third row of this determinant where we have the x component of the electric field intensity, the y component of the electric field intensity and the z component of the electric field intensity. If you look at the phasor value of the electric field intensity in the lossless dielectric medium, the phasor value of the electric field intensity uh, in the lossless dielectric medium uh, is uh, in the direction of the unit vector Ax. This means that this vector has got only one component which is the x component. The y component uh, is 0 and the z component is 0 as well. So we put the values uh, in this uh, particular determinant uh, so here is the x component of the electric field intensity, the y component of the electric field intensity is 0 and the z component of the electric field intensity is 0 as well. We expand this determinant and the expansion of this determinant results in this particular equation. The magnetic field intensity, the phasor value of the magnetic field intensity is equal to minus j beta by minus j omega mu e naught e raised to power minus j beta z ay. So this is the phasor value of the uh, magnetic field intensity in the lossless dielectric medium and uh, we put the value of beta in this particular equation. And we know that beta 
is basically uh, equal to omega under root mu epsilon. So let us put the value of beta on the right hand side of this particular equation. So we put the value of beta in this particular equation. Beta is equal to uh, omega under root mu epsilon. So we just put the value of beta in this particular uh, equation uh, and we get minus j omega under root mu epsilon by minus j omega mu e naught e raised to power minus j beta z ax. We simplify this equation and the simplification of this equation gives you equation number 47. So the magnetic field intensity is equal to 1 over under root mu by epsilon e naught e raised to power minus j beta z ay. And we replace uh, under root mu by epsilon with the help of eta and eta is known as the intrinsic or the characteristic impedance of the lossless dielectric medium and this characteristic impedance is a real quantity so you see the intrinsic impedance of the lossy dielectric medium is a complex quantity while the intrinsic impedance of the lossless dielectric medium is a real quantity. So we put this value in uh, equation number 47 uh, where we obtain the phasor value of the magnetic field intensity in the lossless dielectric medium. So the phasor value of the magnetic field intensity in a lossless dielectric medium is equal to 1 over eta into e naught into e raised to power minus j beta z into a y. So equation number 48 gives you the phasor value of the magnetic field intensity in uh, a lossless dielectric medium. Well, uh, the same magnetic field intensity in instantaneous form we have uh, the instantaneous value of the magnetic field intensity in the lossless dielectric medium and uh, the instantaneous value of the magnetic field intensity in the lossless dielectric medium will be equal to E naught divided by eta into sine of omega t minus beta z a y. So this is how we calculate the magnetic field intensity of uh, the transverse electromagnetic wave in a lossless dielectric medium. If you guys want to calculate the average power density, you guys can calculate the average power density with the help of this particular equation. So the average uh, power density can be calculated with the help of this particular equation. The average power density will be equal to 1 over 2 into the real component of the, elect the phasor value of the electric field intensity cross the conjugate of the phasor value of the magnetic field intensity. So using this uh, equation, we can compute the average power density of uh, a transverse electromagnetic wave in a lossless dielectric medium. Propagation of the transverse electromagnetic wave in free space. Uh, free space is a special medium. The permeability of free space is represented by mu naught and the permittivity of free space is represented by epsilon naught. The conductivity of free space is zero. So we can claim that free space is a lossless dielectric medium, the attenuation of the electromagnetic wave 
does not take place in free space. So we consider the electric field intensity of uh, this transverse electromagnetic wave along x-axis. We consider the magnetic field intensity of the transverse electromagnetic wave along y-axis and we uh, assume that the wave is propagating along z-axis. So the velocity of the wave uh, is along z-axis. So this is the transverse electromagnetic wave in free space. We want to derive the equation for the electric field intensity and the equation for the magnetic field intensity in free space. So in order to derive the equation for the electric field intensity in free space, we consider this equation of Maxwell, which says that the curl of the electric field intensity is equal to minus j omega b, where b is uh, the magnetic flux density of the transverse electromagnetic wave. We know that uh, the magnetic flux density in free space will be equal to mu naught h. So the curl of the electric field intensity is equal to minus j omega mu naught h. We calculate the curl of the quantity on the curl of the vector quantity on the left hand side and the curl of the vector quantity on the right hand side as well. So the curl of the vector quantity on the left hand side will be equal to minus j omega mu, na, mu naught into the curl of the magnetic field intensity. We recall another equation of Maxwell and according to this equation of Maxwell the curl of the magnetic field intensity is equal to j plus j omega d. This is uh, another equation of Maxwell and we put uh, this value of del cross h in equation number 58. So we put the value of del, uh, del cross h in equation number 58 the curl of the curl of the electric field intensity is equal to minus j omega mu naught j plus j omega d. We put the value of d which is uh, epsilon epsilon naught e. So the curl of the curl of the electric field intensity is equal to minus j omega mu naught into j plus j omega epsilon naught into E. We know that uh, j uh, which is uh, the conduction current density uh, is equal to omega epsilon uh, uh, which is equal to omega E. E is the phasor value of the electric field intensity. So we put uh, the value of j in equation number 61 if we put the value of j in equation number 61 we obtain equation number 62 so the curl of the curl of the electric field intensity is equal to minus j omega mu naught into sigma e plus j omega epsilon naught e we know that the conductivity of free space is equal to zero. So uh, if the conductivity of uh, the free space is equal to zero, uh, we obtain uh, this particular equation where uh, the curl of the curl of the electric field intensity is equal to minus omega square mu naught epsilon naught e. We know that uh, the curl of the curl of the electric field intensity can be replaced by minus del square e, where del square e in the rectangular coordinate system is uh, equal to curly square by curly x square of the electric field intensity plus curly square by curly 
y square of the electric field intensity plus curly square by curly z square of the electric field intensity. So we replace del cross del cross e by minus del square e. So if we replace it by minus del square e, we obtain minus del square e, which is equal to minus uh, omega square mu naught epsilon naught into e. Well, uh, keep it in your mind that this sign is that this sign is plus. Okay, yes, this sign is plus. So if this sign is plus, then this sign will be positive as well. Make uh, this sign is positive as well. So if we simplify this equation, we get equation number sixty-six. Del square e plus omega square mu naught epsilon naught e is equal to 0. So this is uh, the second order homogeneous differential equation. We need to find out the solution of the second order homogeneous differential equation. And in order to find out the solution of this second order homogeneous differential equation, we need to find out its auxiliary equation. We need to find out the auxiliary equation of equation number 66. This equation is the second order homogeneous differential equation. We know that the electric field intensity is moving along the axis. So if there is any change in the electric field intensity, the change will be due to z axis. Why? Because the wave is moving along z axis. So the electric field intensity is a function of z-axis. If the electric field intensity is a function of z-axis, then uh, del square E will be equal to curly square by curly z square of the electric field intensity. Why? Because the electric field intensity is a function of z only. It's not a function of y, so the derivative with respect to y will be equal to zero. It's not a function of x, the derivative with respect to x will be equal to 0 as well. So we can write down the second order homogeneous differential equation in this particular form. Curly square by curly z square of the electric field intensity plus omega square mu naught epsilon naught into the phasor value of the electric field intensity will be equal to 0. And this equation is the second order homogeneous differential equation we need to find out the solution of this uh, second order uh, homogeneous differential equation and in order to find out the solution of the second order homogeneous differential equation we need to find out the auxiliary equation of this uh, second order differential equation so let us replace curly by curly z by m. So if we replace curly by curly z by m, we obtain equation number 68 where m square e plus omega square mu naught epsilon naught e is equal to 0. Equation number 68 can be written uh, in the form of equation number 69. Uh, we have m square plus uh, omega square mu naught epsilon naught into the phasor value of the electric field intensity, which is equal to zero. 
we know that uh, the phasor value of the electric field intensity is not equal to zero because this represent uh, this represents the wave in free space. So uh, obviously, m square plus uh, m square plus uh, omega square uh, mu naught epsilon naught will be equal to zero and we can find out uh, you see this equation is known as the auxiliary equation of the second order homogeneous differential equation we need to find out the roots of this particular equation and there will be two roots uh, the roots are uh, imaginary we have plus uh, j omega under root mu naught epsilon naught and minus j omega under root mu naught epsilon naught. As uh, you see, we know that m uh, in the previous uh, case, uh, that is uh, in the lossy dielectric medium, was equal to uh, alpha plus j beta naught. So you see, alpha is the real component of the root and uh, beta is the imaginary component of the root so as the real component of the root in our case is zero that's why alpha will be equal to zero so alpha in this particular case is zero and uh, the roots are uh, imaginary we represent these roots by beta naught so beta naught will be equal to omega under root uh, mu naught epsilon naught and uh, uh, the solution of the second order homogeneous differential equation is e naught into e raised to power minus j beta naught z plus e b into e raised to power j beta naught z into a x there are two components of uh, the wave in this particular equation this component uh, is the component which is moving along positive z axis and this component represents the component which is moving along uh, negative z axis if you look at the diagram we can see that, that the wave is moving along positive z axis only in our case no component of the wave is moving along negative z axis so we consider the component of the electric field intensity which is moving along positive z axis so here is the phasor value of the electric field intensity in a free space the phasor value of the electric field intensity in free space is equal to e naught e raised to power minus j beta naught z ax and we can write down, we can write down the same uh, electric field intensity in phasor form so sorry uh, this is the phasor form of the electric field intensity and we can write down the same electric field intensity in instantaneous form so in instantaneous form the electric field intensity in free space is equal to e naught into sine of omega t minus beta z ax so this is uh, the electric field intensity in free space let us talk about the magnetic field intensity in a free space uh, in order to find out the magnetic field intensity of the transverse electromagnetic wave in free space we consider the phasor value of the electric field intensity in free space which is given uh, in equation number 74 the phasor value of the electric field intensity is equal to e naught into e raised to power minus j beta naught z ax well uh, in order to calculate the magnetic field intensity of uh, the transverse electromagnetic wave in free space we consider one of the four equation of Maxwell in equation number 75 this is uh, one of the four equations of Maxwell where the curl of the electric field intensity is equal to minus j omega mu naught h and we can find out the magnetic field intensity with the help of this particular equation the magnetic field intensity will be equal to 1 over minus j omega mu naught and then we have the curl of the electric field intensity you know that the curl of the electric field intensity is calculated with the help of a determinant
so h will be equal to uh, 1 over minus j omega mu naught and we can find out the curl of the electric field intensity with the help of this uh, determinant and you know that there is only one component of the electric field intensity which is the x component the y component of the electric field intensity is zero and the z component of the electric field intensity is zero as well so we put uh, the value of the x component of the electric field intensity in this determinant which is e naught into e raised to power minus j beta naught z the y component of the electric field intensity is zero and the z component of the electric field intensity is zero so we put the value of the x component of the electric field intensity in the third row of this determinant uh, where uh, the y component is zero and uh, the z component is zero as well so if we expand this determinant the expansion of this determinant gives you this uh, particular equation and what we do we put the value of beta naught in this particular equation what is the value of beta naught uh, the value of beta naught is omega under root mu naught epsilon naught this is the value of b naught and if we simplify this particular equation the magnetic field intensity will be equal to uh, 1 over uh, under root mu naught by epsilon naught into e naught e raised to power minus j beta naught z a y and uh, where the quantity in the denominator is represented by eta naught which is the characteristic or the intrinsic impedance of uh, the free space and if you put the values on the right hand side of this particular equation the uh, numerical value turns out to be 377 ohm so the uh, intrinsic impedance of the free space is 377 ohm so if we put uh, the value of uh, this uh, intrinsic impedance in uh, the previous equation we get uh, the phasor value of the magnetic field intensity here is the phasor value of the magnetic field intensity uh, the phasor value of the magnetic field intensity will be equal to e naught by eta into e raised to power minus j beta naught z a y and we can write down the magnetic field intensity in the instantaneous form as well in the instantaneous form the magnetic field intensity will be equal to e naught by uh, e naught by eta naught into sine of omega t minus beta naught z a y so this is the magnetic field intensity of the transverse electromagnetic wave in uh, free space uh, we can uh, find out the average power density of the transverse electromagnetic wave with the help of the same equation that is with the help of 1 over 2 into the real component of the phasor value of the electric field intensity cross the conjugate of the phasor value of the magnetic field intensity you see the maximum speed of the transverse the transverse electromagnetic wave take, takes place in free space which is 3 into 10 raised to power 8 meter per second so this is the speed of uh, the transverse uh, electromagnetic wave in uh, free space